That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, and this one is quite the doozy. So, Rashida Tlaib, it's been a while since she did something anti-Semitic, so I guess she felt like she needed to make up for lost time, because I don't think she's done anything anti-Semitic for like four or five months now, so I guess she was really feeling like she needed to uh, step up her anti-Semitism game, so instead of doing one anti-Semitic thing, she did two anti-Semitic things, <laughs> In one, so this is a picture that was posted by, I believe, by her. So she doesn't, e not even aware of her own anti-Semitism, which is, you know, for her about par for the course. This is Rashida Tlaib sporting a shirt and promoting a book by Linda Sarsour, another well-known and well-documented anti-Semite. Now you probably missed this, just like I would have missed it if I weren't specifically looking for it. The shirt that she is wearing, that is actually a depiction of Israel, and it has different caricatures over it, and what that spells is Palestine. So she's wearing a shirt where you can see Israel, but in those, I guess, Arabic letters, I'm not sure exactly what kind of characters those are, but the translation is it says Palestine over it, so she's saying Palestine should be what Israel is considered which is horrible on a number of levels. It would be kind of like in the middle of the occupi uh, occupation, well, or before, I guess, technically, the occupation of France by Germany, you were wearing a shirt that had France on the front of it, and it said Germany across it. That's about the level of what we're dealing with. And the ad that actually promotes this shirt, the ad that presumably she got this same shirt from, says that this is a way to show solidarity with those on the ground and, and be like the brave warriors that are defending Palestine, uh, which is probably terrorist. It seems like that's a reference to it, because if you're talking about people that are attacking Israel, those would be the terrorists. Those are the ones that are launching rockets on them and, and sending bombs. And just earlier this week, I believe, there were reports of terrorists actually strapping IEDs to balloons, hoping to ensnare Jewish children with them. And you'll remember that back when the big protest was going on that we covered, there were people flying kites with swastikas, and the media was out there asking, was like, don't you realize that flying kites with swastikas and sending them over there is, is something that the media is going to look at and, and maybe get the wrong idea. And the Palestinians were like, no, that's exactly the idea we're wanting to send. We want to burn Jews. You're standing with those people and throwing in your lot with them and, and want Israel to not exist. And this should come as no surprise to anyone. Keep in mind, Rashida Tlaib is one that went on record just a few months ago when she was doing an interview. In fact, when I said that it had been about four or five months, I think that this was the last thing that happened with Rashid, Rashid Tlaib, her last anti-Semitic rant, where she started talking about how there should be a one-state solution and Palestine should be ruling over the land that is currently known as Israel. So this really isn't a big surprise to anybody. She's somebody that supports the BDS movement. She has a giant map in her office where she has Israel marked over and it says Palestine over the map that is in her office in Congress. And remember that Linda Sarsour, the person whose book she is promoting there in that picture, is somebody that was so rabidly anti-Semitic that the Women's March kicked her out. Now I want you to think about this. This isn't The Blaze or Conservative Review or Breitbart, or any of the right-leaning media. This isn't something that was started by Fox News. This is a bunch of uber-liberal women that got together specifically to protest Donald Trump and want him out of office that were looking at Linda Sarsour as like, uh, that chick's crazy, and we don't want her in our organization. That's how radical Linda Sarsour is. A group that seems to be pretty comfortable and chummy with Antifa was like, yeah, but Linda Sarsour, she's kind of extreme. Let's stay away from her. So to give you a sampling of some of the things that Sarsour has said in the past, she said that, quote, how can you be against white supremacy in America 
and the idea of being in a state based on race and class, but then you support a state like Israel that is based on supremacy, that is built on the idea that Jews are supreme to everyone else. That's such a ridiculous claim, because the idea that you, you really think that the nation of Israel is built on the idea that Jews are superior to everyone else, it was built because they needed a homeland because people kept killing them. They were the victims of racial supremacy, and thus they needed a space to be able to live in safety. And the people that are being supported by people like Linda Sarsour and Rashida Tlaib are still trying to kill them. And by the way, using the same arguments and even the same symbols that the people back in World War II were trying to use to eliminate them. The idea that the nation of Israel is based on supremacy is just historically inaccurate. It was based on the idea that we've got to have somewhere to live because our homes have been torn out and we've been driven out of every other nation because of the Nazis. One of the big things that people will try to say to justify that and say, no, no, they're not really anti-Jewish. Look at them. They're both supporting Bernie Sanders, who is Jewish. Well, the idea that Bernie Sanders is pro-Jewish is actually kind of a question mark, which sounds weird to say because he is racially Jewish, and I understand that, but this is also a guy who back in 2019, Bernie said that Israel is run by, quote, a bunch of right-wing racists. Israel apparently just wanting to exist and wanting to have a homeland of their own, and by the way, this is land that they rightfully won in the Six Days War. Apparently that is somehow racist. And think about the fact that Bernie has threatened to cut funding to Israel if he is elected president. This is a guy who wants to fund literally everything. He wants to fund medical care for people outside of the country to be able to come into the country. He's saying, you know what, we'll just do open borders and all the illegal immigrants will have access to universal Medicare. I mean, th this is Bernie shtick. He wants to pay for everything, but the one thing he doesn't want to pay for is helping our most important ally in the Middle East be able to afford the weapons to defend themselves from their enemies, which are on literally every single border. They don't have a friendly state near them. And this is the one thing that Bernie is saying that we have to cut. It's amazing. We finally found a government program that Bernie Sanders does not want to go all in on. And what is it? Funding the Jewish state of Israel. So the idea that Bernie's super pro-Jewish and supporting Bernie is a sign that you're really in favor of Jews and you're not anti-Semitic, that's a hard sell. A real hard sell. And I want you to also remember that when Bernie is critical of Israel and calls them a bunch of right-wing racists, this is the same guy that praises Castro. So when you're looking and comparing the two, Bernie Sanders says that Israel's a terrible place, the whole thing is founded on racism, they're all a bunch of racists running that country, but Castro, that's a great guy, I mean, and he has no problem praising people like Castro and Maduro and Vladimir Lenin, but when it comes to the people that are leading Israel, those people are all a bunch of right-wing racists, we don't, there's nothing nice to be said about them. But sure, supporting Bernie, that's the ultimate act, that, that gives you complete immunity from anti-Semitism. It's just stupid. But the truth is the left only cares about anti-Semitism when they can use it to push their own agenda. In the same way that they only care about people getting shot and killed when there is some way to push, for example, anti-gun policy, they really only care about anti-Semitism when it helps them politically. You see, when it's anti-Semitism at the march in Charlottesville, well, then they care about it a lot because they feel as though they can use that as a bludgeon to hit their political opponents with. When it's anti-Semitism from Rashida Tlaib, well, they don't care about it as much because that actually hurts them and makes them look bad. And to kind of illustrate this, and, and of course I'm using the broader term now, moving from anti-Semitism specifically to racism as a whole, there were a couple of people that have, in the past few days used a term to describe the coronavirus, which has like three names now. 
Uh, yeah, it would be exactly three because there's a scientific name, COVID-19, and then there's the coronavirus, which is the more common name. And then there's another one, which, by the way, I've been hearing for a couple of weeks now from people of all kind of per- political persuasions called the Wuhan flu. But all of a sudden, when House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, a Republican, and President Trump's Secretary of State Mike Pompeo used Wuhan flu to describe it, they just used it, you know, just it's part of the vernacular. All of a sudden, when they said it, now it's racist. Now that, that means that they're against Asians. That they're just using this as some kind of political ploy. But it wasn't racist five seconds ago when people on the left were using that term. And they were using the other terms too. But now all of a sudden it's racist. What does that tell you? That the people on the left, they don't care about racism either. They care about it so long as they can use it to push their policies, to push their agenda. Ultimately, it is just a means to an end. Because if you really cared about racism and you really cared about anti-Semitism, you would call people out on it regardless of what side of the aisle they were on. They don't believe that this is racist. They just saw an opportunity to score political points. Basically, anything that might be somewhat racially sensitive, and I don't even think this qualifies as that, is racist if it's said by somebody on the right, but somebody on the left can full out be an anti-Semite and not get called out for their racism. It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives, so I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them. I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell, and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely, thank you.